Phil actually put that pressure onto that potential Weezing Reggie Gigas lead and get like just get that momentum because that is everything. You can't let Weezing and Reggie Gigas steal the show there. You can't let them take the KOs. You can't let them get that momentum. And Yoav, after getting two out yesterday, surely going to be recognizing that. <laughs> Exactly. So let's get into this rematch. Four players remain in the tournament. So excited to see who makes it out through the losers bracket. And there it is. It's Weezing plus Regigigas. I feel like this is a story we've told before <laughs> with all of these same four Pokemon. And I'm really excited to see if this plays out differently. I know the, right away, walking <laughs> into that Max Quake moves. trick room, <laughs> definitely thought about this, definitely recognizing that this is the way to be putting a pressure on Alberto here, and I'm really excited to see this adjustment. We talked about this so much yesterday, and I'm excited to see it finally in action here. Yeah, so finally, I think that's absolutely the best option in this case. Now, Alberto has to make the decision, right? Do you just go for the taunt onto the uh, Porygon? Do you go for a Willow response to the round on instead? I think Alberto certainly should be expecting this, but the reason why I wanted to see you all make this play yesterday is because no matter what Alberto does, it's a great turn one for you. If you get Trick Room up, Alberto's team is so fast, it just feels like there's no way to come back already. And if you don't get Trick Room up, well, then you probably are knocking out the Weezing on turn one. So finally, applying more pressure, realizing, hey, I can't just protect Rob on turn one. Let me just, you know, put my pedal or my foot on the pedal right now and just apply uh, pressure immediately. And yeah, this is the perfect play for Yoav. Alberto didn't end up going with that Thunderous Urshifu lead combination. So uh, I think Yoav getting the better end of this trade-off, regardless of what Alberto does on turn one. The Weezing, though, just opting to go for this Protect here, not wanting to risk it. Regigius with that very typical max strike, hitting it into the Porygon 2. I mean, the speed boost, though, kind of something that Yoav wants, like, with this Trick Room that's going to be setting up here momentarily. This Max Quake, though, that we're going to see into the Weezing. It'll be through a Protect, but surely pick up a little bit of a damage here. It brings it down to, like, takes away about a third of its health here, but I'm loving that this Porygon 2 got this Trick Room set up, and I'm really excited to see how Alberto responds to this. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's a great Protect on Alberto's end, recognizing if I don't Protect, the Weezing's just going to faint. This Weezing doesn't really have any speed investment, so it might actually still outspeed Groudon despite the max strike, and if you, you know, do outspeed, you can at least get a Willowisp spot. but, uh, you know, Yoav's playing such a different approach in the last couple times these players played, you know, Regigigas just picked up so many knockouts. This time around, it's really going to struggle to pick up even one KO despite Weezing being out on the field, thanks to Recover. That, that max strike damage being taken away, but the Weezing does still underspeed this round here, and it does hit the Willowisp. Max Quake will be coming back out now, but now that the attack has been dropped, it's still oh. gonna pick up the KO anyways here. This Weezing will go down, and this Regigigas is not going to be... Oh wait, oh, no, that was... No! The, what? It was so close! Apologies there. The feet coming through, there was one little sliver of HP left. That was such a big live. The Weezing getting the berry back as well does get to stick around. Wow. I mean, yeah, my question is whether or not that's actually enough. This has definitely gone better than I you know, would have expected for Alberto's end, in the sense that, hey, Regigigas is going to get a lot of damage off these couple of turns, but the reality is that Regigigas keeps going for a max strike on a Porygon, and Porygon is essentially just wasting its turn of, uh, turns of max, right? With Regigigas, you really want to pick up knockouts during your turns of max, and these recovers just negate all of it, right? So, uh, in the end, Weezing, you know, was on the field for three turns, and so Gigas does actually end up getting three turns of maximum power damage off. But because the Groudon was never targeted, and this Porygon is just healing all the damage back anyway, and Trick Room is just so good against Alberto's team, like, I feel like this is still a pretty good position for you all. Of course, this ground just hitting another Max Quake into this Weezing, bringing it back down. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting and funny when both of the Max targets are just hitting into the support out <laughs> on the field, and both of the support sticking around the Regigigas with another Max Strike. This turn, though, opting to finally hit into the ground on here, potentially recognizing that this Porygon is just going to be healing the damage off and opting to try and find a different way to be taking that out later. So one thing I think Alberto's done well is at least stalling out these first couple turns of Trick Room. You absolutely cannot let Yoav get another Trick Room up in this game. So the goal, if 
you're from Alberto's end should be to you know time it perfectly so that you have offensive resources to knock out Porygon on the uh, first turn after Trick Room expires because if Porygon gets another Trick Room off Alberto's team is just so hyper offensive typically Weezing is you know meant as the counter to Trick Room with that taunt but uh, yeah I, I just think that and I love the Grimstar I'll bring this time around because now you can actually get those screens up rather than just, you know, fainting immediately. Ice Beam's gonna come out here. And the beauty is, you know, as you knock out the Weezing, now Prankster is up. So you can get that Reflect, you can get that Light Screen off, and that might be enough for Porygon to actually maybe get another Trick Room up. No, oh, certainly. That Weezing being taken out. There'll be no Taunt Pressure on that Porygon too. And the Ice Punch from the Regigigas, now that that Slow Star is activated, is not doing much to this Porygon too at all and it's out on the field sitting pretty here. Yeah and now you know Grimmsnarl when Yoav brought it against Alberto in game one I believe of the first time they played it did absolutely nothing right it came in and it just fainted to a max strike couldn't even get a reflect or a light screen up because of wheezing and neutralizing gas. This time around, you can actually get the screens up which is really valuable. Alberto actually bringing out the Calyrex uh, which makes sense I mean the, the tricky thing here is if you can, you know, get Urshifu in safely as well. Because if another Trick Room goes up, I just don't see how Alberto can win this game. So, Alberto is basically going to want to position himself. This turn is really critical to set yourself up for the next turn. And there is that Regigigas switch out to get Urshifu out exactly so that you can try to knock out Porygon next turn. Yeah, this Porygon too being so problematic. The Calyrex though, just opting to go for a Protect this turn as the Grim Snarl just setting up that Reflect, starting to limit the amount of damage that Alberto's going to be doing going forward. Ice Beam into your Shifu, deals about half damage, a nice little chunk of damage from this Porygon here. And I mean, it's going to be big what Alberto does here to try and eliminate this Porygon 2 now, because I, I almost feel like it's like now or never, right? It has to be a double up on a Porygon, so there's the side shock. I'm sure we'll see a close combat. The question is, is it enough to actually knock out Porygon? Let's see. All right, here's that close combat. It all comes down to this and... Oh, oh three, three HP! HP. This Porygon 2 is stubborn. It's not going to go down today. That was such a big miss. Three HP. Wow. And the critical hit on the Urshifu as well. Urshifu going down. One of the big ways to be dealing with this Porygon 2 is left the field, and this Porygon 2 is just free to set up another Trick Room here. And as you said earlier, Alberto really needed to stop that second Trick Room from going up, and y'all just has all the pressure going into this ending here. Yeah, honestly, part of me is thinking, like, even if Porygon faints there and Trick Room doesn't go up, Yoav still feels like it's, like, you're in a really good spot, right? Because then you KO the Urshifu after he eats the defense drop. You can, uh, you already have the, the screens up as well. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that Trick Room just ensuring that this game is certainly gonna, uh, you know, be Yoav's now. But even without it, I think, like, Alberto had a decent start, all things considered, with Weezing Regigigas, right? I, like, got maximum value out of the Regigigas in terms of three turns and max moves, but got on Porygon just stalled it out really well. So, I think, you know, as we consider going into a game two from Alberto's end, you really want to think about your lead adjustment, because, like I mentioned, if you're expecting Porygon and Groudon, Weezing plus Regigigas I don't think is actually the best option. I think it's going to be that Thunderous plus that Urshifu instead. And look how little damage High Horsepower does there. <laughs> And Reggie is doing absolutely nothing without Tal wheezing out on the field. And all Yolov has to do now, it feels like, is just keep chipping these Pokemon away. This Calyrex not able to touch that Porygon 2 with that Astro Barrage. It's such a strong attack, but not going to affect normal types at all. And it's not very effective against this Grimmsnarl either. <laughs> Picking up a critical hit, but still not even bringing it below half here. Yeah, I mean, th this game definitely feels like a wrap. Like, that's that's the reality with Alberto and uh, Alberto's team, right? If Trick Room goes up against you, it's actually very difficult to win because Alberto's team is so hyper-offensive and so fast. And for Trick Room to go up twice, uh, you know, if that ever happens against this team, it, it's basically like you have 0% chance of winning. It's just so slim. And, you know, Alberto recognizing, hey, maybe I can try to still win this with a lot of crits. And there's a freeze to start things off, but uh, I still think like, Alberto's just too far behind. <laughs> Grimstarl staying frozen out on the field. The Calyrex just taking the opportunity for a substitute here. Ian, it's definitely an uphill battle, but you know, if you think there's a chance, you have to play it out, and that is exactly what it looks like is going to happen here. And I mean, you know, the Grimstarl is already frozen. What's, what's to say that the Porygon 2 can't be frozen as well here? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Alberto definitely playing to his outs, not giving up, so, you know, kudos to him. Uh, 
Yo, I just feels like he has way too many resources that you could play this game in so many different ways and still win. But on Alberto's end, you know, you'll never want to count yourself out and you want to play uh, until the game is officially over, right? So uh, the thing is that there's no recovery really from Alberto's end and it's not a return. <laughs> The Porygon 2 looking to get some revenge for Grimstarl here and it freezes that Reggie Gigas. <laughs> Just so funny. And this Calyrex will come up from behind its substitute to hit a Astro Barrage very lightly into this Incineroar here. <laughs> Man, the irony of that freeze there. I feel like that's... <laughs> this it was it was already a very difficult match, but at this point too, if that Reggie Gigas can't try and pull something out here, it's certainly a little too late. Yeah, and I think this is really interesting because look how ineffective Calyrex Shadow Rider is. Using if Birdo chooses to make it here. So let's get into the game two to see if he can make some adjustments to be dealing with what you're throwing at him right now. So, oh, it is going to be that Reggie, freezing in Reggie Gigas here. I'm not too fond of that because of course, Yoav opting to go for that ground on and Porygon two again and I mean, we saw just how it went the first time around, so Alberto must have something up his sleeve here if opting to go for this lead again. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if he's just, you know, willing to go for, uh... It's still tough, right? Like, yeah, I mean, the Max Wake plus Trick Room is always just such a safe option that I don't see how Alberto, like, comes out of the turn positive. Maybe you trade, but the reality is if Trick Room goes up, it's still so disastrous. And uh, we've seen that this Weezing is rather slow, right? So it's not like you can just Max Strike the Groudon onto the Porygon. That would probably be the best case option if Weezing is speed investing. But because it doesn't, I think Alberto this whole round will probably just divert his attacks rather than targeting Porygon and just consistently target Groudon a couple of times. Try to knock that out rather than wasting attacks on a Porygon. That definitely could be an adjustment, but at the same time, if Trick Room goes up, it's still really, really rough. And for Yoav, then, like, you can't protect the Weezing safely here. If you protect, then Trick Room goes up. If you taunt, try to taunt, then it's just going to get KO'd. So it feels like you're pretty much forced to protect Weezing on turn one. But even a Hailstorm and a Groudon doesn't do that much. Definitely. Yoav definitely has him a little bit of a corner here. The Weezing will go for that protect. So surely a Trick Room will be out later on here. The Regigigas. Going for that max strike this time around, it will be hitting into the ground. Not wanting all of this nice damage to be going to waste here, and will target into something that can't be can't be healing itself up consistently. So that max quake, we'll see that of course into the wheezing here, and regardless, through the protect, will do a sizable amount of damage. And this Porygon too, just like the first game, is free to just go upset the rules and get this trick room started. Yep, and this time around, it's also not taking any damage, right? So you can just launch an Ice Beam and a Max Quake into Louising, and even with the burn, that might be enough to pick up a Knockout, honestly. Uh, Alberto also notably did not go for a Max Hailstorm, just went for that Max Strike instead. Uh, and so now, if, I mean, if Weezing goes down, once again, the Reggie Gigas really isn't doing anything, and Alberto's late game is so much weaker when considering that there's just so much bulk on Yoav's end. So yeah, it's going to be the Ice Beam uh, double up onto Weezing. Of course, the Will-O-Wisp does connect again this time around, but we saw how close it was the first time around with Weezing Living, but surely after this Ice Beam, it is not going to matter, and sure enough, it looks like a clean KO this time around. The Weezing is not going to appreciate that, surely, and neither is the Regigigas, as all the abilities are back on, including its slow start. Yeah, and the download special attack boost makes it so much harder as well, right? Albardo doesn't really have that many bulky Pokemon, so Ice Beams are actually going to do a sizable amount of damage. You've got him Trick Room up as well, and I, I think, like, uh, Alberto just really needs to deny Trick Room in this matchup, right? So there's the Max Hailstorm coming out this time around, but it's a little bit too late. Yeah, with that slow start, Regigigas just does so much, so little damage, and now it really feels like a liability more than anything, you know? Uh, at the end of the day, Groudon traded around 50% of its health, but uh, this is a, you know, great trade-off for Yoav. In fact, I'd argue he might be even in a better position than he was in that last game because he's eliminated the Weezing a little bit faster, so... Uh, this is the thing, right? I, I think, like, Alberto needed to cover for the Max Quake Trick Room play turn one, and the Gigas damage into Groudon just isn't actually worth it, because if you're not actually picking up the KO, then, you know, what does it really matter? So, this is why I was thinking Thunderous Urshifu could have been a better lead option, just because you can snowball really quickly, and it punishes Yo off very heavily for bringing mainly passive Pokemon and Porygon and Sinor and that Grimmsnarl. That Calyrex will be hitting the field. Not too sure how I'm feeling about that one. We saw it. How little damage it was doing across the first time around. Of course, it is still in Trick Room 2, so it's not going to be 
hitting this ground on first either, and definitely just really frail against all these Pokemon that Yoav has on his side here. Yeah, and I think the path to victory of your Alberto right now is you need to obviously conserve the Calyrex. He actually does not go for a Protect onto it, but perhaps thinking I'm so far behind in this game, I'm just gonna, you know, go for some really, really big plays because uh, I'm, you know, otherwise, if I just play safely, I'm gonna lose the game. So I can certainly respect that. Uh, Urshifu in the late game is probably the most valuable asset for Alberto here, just because he can crit through and go for those wicked uh, blows. Close combat's pretty good damage output as well, but and the reality is that Alberto's damage output is just so lacking right now, and these special defense boosts from these max quakes are also so, so valuable. It means like Calyrex barely does any damage. So Calyrex will survive the turn here. Alberto, you know, will likely actually stall out the Trick Room and have Urshifu out for after Trick Room is over, but the reality is that the Regigigas isn't really doing any threatening uh, and tries to go for a sub, but yeah, the nice double up there prevents this up from even going up it was a definitely a big risky play from alberto but like you said this this point of the game these big plays need to be made and it could have been something to really shift the tides here but unfortunately the calyrex just takes heavy damage this turn with absolutely nothing to show for it as dynamax on both ends of the fields expire yeah concerningly respect the substitute there i think the reality is that even uh, like, just because there's Incineroar and Grimmsnarl in the back, Calyrex and Urshifu actually do really poorly into those. So what's interesting is that in this game, uh, you know, Yoav mainly has support Pokemon. Uh, Porygon, Incineroar, Grimmsnarl, like, it's a very clear, uh, like, sweeper in the ground on everything else is more defensive. But the defensive options are actually really good offensively against Alberto's Pokemon selection specifically. Uh, Grimmsnarl with that Spirit Break into Urshifu, Incineroar into the Calyrex. And so uh, this is why uh, Yoav could afford to go with these if you were expecting Alberto to bring the same Pokemon. Certainly, that Urshifu is going to be hitting the field in replacement of the Calyrex. Is saved from the Ice Beam, though, as it targets into the Regigigas instead that fires back with its own Ice Punch, doing very little damage at this point in the game. At this point, the Urshifu definitely looking like one of the best win cons here, but is there anything else that Alberto can really, really do here? Uh, it really feels like the answer is no, unfortunately. I mean, the reality is that Yoav's only lost, you know, a little bit of health between all the Pokemon. You have Incineroar for this Intimidate. Uh, you know, the Urshifu Sash is broken. Uh, and now you bring out the Groudon as well. It just, it feels like, once again, Alberto just wasn't able to do enough damage, right? And with Regigigas, if you don't do enough damage, uh, in the early game, that typically is a really tough start. And in addition, it's not like Urshifu and Calyrex are really strong sweepers in this game because they, like, the Grimstorm and the Incineroar just match up so well. So, yeah, you know, Ice Punch comes out right now from the Regigigas, but it's not really that big of a deal. And, uh, you know, Yoav, they're trying to bait the close combat out. You know, you get the defense drop and then Spirit Break should KO the Urshifu. So, good protect there on the Urshifu, for sure. Uh, Trick Room expires now, but the reality is that Yoav still has just so many Pokemon. I think you just sacrifice the Groudon. Uh, you could probably get another Trick Room up if you just get Incineroar and Porygon out next to each other. So I, I see very few ways for Alberto to actually win this game. Um, maybe it starts with an Ice Punch Freeze, but even with crits, like Grimstar and Porygon are just all so bulky. So we will see the close combat to start out the turn from this Grimstar here. You were talking about Ice Punch Freezes, but at this point, too, with the... With the Bridge Gigas being Life Orb, it's almost taking just more damage than it's dealing at this point. And with the Christmas Blades double hitting as well, just dealing more damage into it. Of course, the Spirit Break from this Grim Snarl, a supportive Pokemon, but regardless, the Spirit Break is going to do massive damage to the Urshifu and taking out the Pokemon that was probably the best win con going forward here. Grim Snarl is barely hanging on the ground, on, of course is going to go down from its burn. Regigigas, though, finally getting its act together. I don't feel like we really get to see the end of a slow start so often here, but I mean, the Regigigas can do big damage now if it wants, though it's definitely, definitely a little late into this match. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that very often for sure, like you mentioned, but at this point, there's just been so much damage distributed across the board. Incineroar comes out at the perfect time. No more Dynamax. You can safely fake out. Uh, this is why Incineroar is such a common Pokemon in the format, right? If uh, if you don't use Incineroar, Calyrex Shadow Rider can be really tough to deal with. 
And it's not like Incineroar is obviously the only answer to Calyrex Shadow Rider, but it fits onto, you know, pretty much every team, uh, and it's also just very consistent against Calyrex. And so, the main thing here is that Alberto's Restricted Pokemon just was not very effective relative to Yoav's Restricted Pokemon. So, uh, you know, Yo Alberto trying to change the game plan a little bit in the early games, but, uh, you know, this is a great reflect. It just means that Regigigas needs to maybe get a critical hit onto the Incineroar to even stand a chance. No fake out, notably. Uh, and you will get the Astro Barrage to... <laughs> get the knockout there onto the Grim Snarl. So I think Regigigas needs to get a critical hit here. If not, the game is certainly over. Even with critical hits, there's still so much Pokemon on Yoav's side, and the Light Orb just chipping away at his own damage. We will see that Giga Impact coming out, though, and unfortunately not making too much of an impact as it deals just <laughs> a bit of damage to its Incineroar and takes itself out, and it's this poor Calyrex against the Incineroar, not able to stand up to this Snarl, and Yoav is going to be taking this 2-0 and be moving on here. That was definitely...